Hello students, in this video we will be discussing about the problems of voltage amplifier with feedback. So, so currently I have stated a problem wherein uh, the circuit is shown towards the right side and uh, you have an op amp and this particular op amp is considered to be an ideal op amp. Okay. So, when I say it is an ideal op amp and which is a voltage amplifier considering that this op amp actually acts as a voltage amplifier, then uh, for a voltage amplifier to be an ideal one, the input impedance which is the Ri is considered to be equal to 0 and the output impedance is basically, uh, sorry, the, the input impedance is considered to be infinity and the output impedance is basically considered as 0. So, one could model this op amp uh, basically with this following structure which you can visualize being available inside this op amp. Okay. So, so, here in this case the voltage Vi is applied as an input and we have something known as a voltage controlled voltage source and that in turn uh, gives us a gain times that of Vi and the output impedance which is R0 is set to be 0 and one could have this voltage to be to be tapped out as V0. Okay. So, this is what we have uh, and the terminal at the top is considered as plus and the terminal at the bottom is considered as negative. Yeah. So, now the very first thing is that we have to see what type of uh, amplifier is this. So, one could uh, quickly recognize right from this particular input source which is defined as a kind of uh, voltage source, but one cannot use this you know to identify whether uh, the type of amplifier that we have used is an voltage amplifier or not. The way that we can use, uh, we can check whether it is a voltage amplifier or not is by seeing the, the feedback network. So, in this case as you could see that the feedback network is composed of this R1 and R2 and uh, this feedback network actually reads in the value of V0 directly on, onto it. So, what we are sampling at the input of this beta network is basically a voltage. So, the type of connection in order to sample the voltage would be something known as shunt, right? Yeah. So, and again, when we look here across the input, the input or the voltage drop across this resistance is nothing but defines some sort of voltage drop across this resistance as Vf, right? So, this Vf again what it mixes is a voltage that is mixed along with the input source of Vs. Okay? So, just by looking at this basic uh, uh, feedback network one could identify the type of amplifier. So, we will just try to analyze uh, similar kind of problems wherein the input source can be rep represented as some sort of a current Is with a resistance Rs. Okay? So, there are, there are possibilities of having a different source here one cannot use this source to identify the type of amplifier that we are dealing and to identify the type of uh, feedback that is being uh, used. Okay. So, it is only by looking into the feedback network one can quickly justify or judge the type of amplifier that is being used for the basic amplifier. Right? Yeah. So, in this case uh, since because the voltage has been mixed up the type of connection that we are making at the input is basically a series. So, let me use this. It is a series connection we know that this series connection will help us to make a voltage mixing across the input. Okay. So, having these set of uh, conclusions, uh, we got to know that this ideal op amp actually mimics a voltage amplifier and that has been replicated like an ideal model of this uh, op amp has been replicated with this structure where the input is basically a voltage input and the output is again a voltage output. So, we have a voltage amplifier that has been modeled ideally with this op amp. Okay. So, having found this basic uh, analogy, let us try to quickly uh, identify a few other things. So, the very first thing that I just want to uh, figure out from here is, is these impedances values. Okay. So, I just want to calculate these things. And, uh, these impedances which, has, which are labeled as R in and R out are actually the impedances of the feedback network without 
for basically excluding the resistance. So, in the, in the case of uh, uh, Rn, uh, it is a feedback impedance, okay. uh, but it excludes the source resistance Rs, whereas the R out is again a feedback impedance as we discussed earlier, uh, but it excludes the resistance Rn. Okay. So, now let us uh, begin uh, uh, by looking at those uh, op amp and visualize what type of uh, uh, in RIF and ROF which are the feedback uh, resistances with including those uh, source resistances and the feed, uh, and the load resistances. Well, let us do that. Uh, so, in order to begin with what we have to first compute is the open loop impedances. Okay. So, let us begin with this discussion. We know from this voltage amplifier as it is a kind of ideal op amplifier, we know that the input impedance of this uh, of this open loop or the basic amplifier is basically infinity and the output impedance uh, which is R naught is 0 in this case. Now, this is the case for a voltage amplifier. Now, one could quickly write the resistances of RIF or the feedback or the feedback impedances just by looking at those uh, uh, across these values. We know that uh, since because across the input, okay, with respect to the input, the type of connection that we make is basically uh, a series connection. Uh, we know that this RIF, which is nothing but the input uh, impedance of the feedback network is written as Ri and whenever we have the series, we know that this Ri impedance would be magnified by this 1 plus A beta, which, which is nothing but the amount of feedback quantity, right. Yeah. So, so as we know that this Ri is already has a value of infinity due to which it ends up having an infinite as your, as your input impedance, okay. So, which, which is a very quick uh, way of using these, uh, these results of the open loop amplifier onto this feedback amplifier input and output impedances. So, similarly, uh, I also wanted to prove the impedance of the feedback network with respect to the output uh, terminal. So, again we know that this uh, feedback network actually creates some sort of sun connection onto our uh, voltage sampling. So, in short I know that whenever there is a shunt connection, so which is a shunt, the impedance seen at that particular output node of the feedback amplifier will step down by a factor which is defined as 1 plus A beta, okay. So, now since the value of this R naught is already set to be equal to 0, so one knows that it is uh, the ROF will also be equal to 0. But uh, as discussed uh, in the case where uh, we have the non-ideal structures for the feedback network as well as the source resistances, the, the input impedance Ri of this open loop uh, configuration is, does not doesn't include only the input impedance uh, Ri of the basic amplifier, but it also has to include the impedances uh, from the feedback as well as the, uh, the source input impedances, right. So, so let us try to fix those things and see whether the results stays the same. I just want to uh, uh, convince you that even though the uh, source has a resistance and even though the feedback network uh, adds a load to the op amp, still I just wanted to say that this input and output impedance of this open loop amplifier still has the same value. So, I just want to prove that, okay. Now, this entire example uh, is basically to prove that when the op amp is ideal irrespective of the other networks that are surrounding it, still the input and output impedance of both open loop as well as the feedback amplifier will have the same quantity of, of infinity at the input and a 0 at the output. They tend to have a specific value uh, only when these, uh, when the op amp or the basic amplifier is considered to be a non-ideal. Uh, circuit, okay. So, let me prove that uh, even uh, the loading effect 
uh, of the feedback network as well as the loading effect of the uh, source uh, voltages even when they try to load the basic amplifier still the input impedance and the output impedance of this uh, the entire configuration will remain to be the same okay, that is what I just wanted to prove. So in order to do so let us uh, try to figure out uh, the, the feedback network. So basically from this network one could see the beta circuit can be drawn where we have this resistance R2 and there is a resistance R1 okay and this is my port 2 and this is my port 1 right this is what we wanted to evaluate it and uh, now basically we also have to remember the type of uh, connection that they make with respect to the uh, basic amplifier right so we know the the, the port 2 actually makes some sort of uh, I guess uh, yeah it basically has a shunt connection and this guy which is an input port which makes a series connection. Now we all do this just to uh, eliminate the loading effect out of this uh, or to make this feedback network uh, completely ideal one and uh, take those resistances and put it onto the uh, basic amplifier this is what we, we actually do. So in order to do so the very first thing is that we need to compute those appropriate values of R11 right. So we just need to evaluate the value of R11. So when I try to evaluate the value of R11 the second port which is basically a shunt connection has to be uh, I, I guess it has to be uh, what is that I said in the morning. So let me just go look back. So whenever there is a shunt connection, uh, what I said is that it has to be open circuited. Okay, yeah. So I have to make this uh, port as open circuit, and then uh, try to evaluate the value of this R11. Uh, is it that shunt connection? No, the shunt connection has to be closed circuit. Okay, yeah. Yeah, the shunt connection has to be closed circuited or short circuited. So let me do that and when I do so uh, the network would then become where when I shot this node to the ground then the network will have these two resistances R1 and R2 in parallel to each other. So the, the impedance of R11 is equal to R1 in parallel with R2 okay. So now on the other hand while trying to evaluate the impedance value of R22 uh, where the the port 1 is basically a series connection and this series connection has to be break by making use of an open circuit. So when we do so then, then when I look from this uh, port number 2 we could see that this resistance R1 goes in, pal, uh, goes in series with this resistance uh, R1 okay the resistance R2 goes in series with resistance R1. And one could uh, prove the same thing just by applying those voltage Vx and measuring the current Ix one could prove the same thing okay. So what we have across the second port while the first port is open circuited is that it is R22 can be written as R1 plus R2 okay. So now that, uh, now that uh, we will slowly begin building this and before that we also have to figure out the value of feedback factor. Now we know that this feedback uh, circuit basically samples an output voltage and feedbacks a voltage which is termed as Vf and that is used to mix the uh, uh, mix, mix the voltage uh, across the input source Vs okay. So, so we know that the transfer function should have this V out sorry Vf divided by v, v out okay. Now one could e quickly evaluate this particular term based on the circuit that has been drawn earlier. Now so let, let me just redraw for the sake for you to understand. Okay. So across the second port what we have sampling is a voltage V0 and across the port 1 what we are tapping as an output signal is nothing but a VF okay. So, so the drop across this resistance R1 is just termed as VF. Now one could use this basic uh, 
a voltage division rule in order to calculate uh, the voltage term Vf, right. So, Vf is nothing but it is defined as R1 into uh, R1 divided by R1 plus R2 into V0 and Vf by V0 which is nothing but the feedback factor beta is written as just the ratio of R1 divided by R1 plus R2, okay. And this is what we have and now that we have got all the quantities out of the feedback network, okay. The impedances or the loading impact of these non-ideal uh, feedback networks as well as the, the transfer function from V0 to Vf, okay. And we are not and we will neglect the reverse trans transformation that is happening from uh, the Vf to v, V0, okay. So, we will not consider that throughout the entire analysis. So, with all these three parameters being calculated out of this uh, beta network, now that let us try to be begin calculating the actual value of Ri, even though I have proved that it is equal to infinity and the R0 which is again uh, uh, which is already calculated to be equal to 0, I actually wanted to prove them that they are the same, okay. So, let me uh, redraw the same uh, configuration where I have Vs and currently uh, the source resistance Rs is being pushed towards the input of the feedback network, okay, uh, or uh, no, not the feedback network, it is pushed onto the basic amplifier. Yeah, so and let me just use a dotted line that this is nothing but our op amp. Okay. Yeah, uh, and uh, we also have computed the resistance value of R11 right from the feedback network, and this is our RS, and we are mixing some sort of voltage. Okay, and here is a case where we have we are considering this voltage divider as some sort of voltage controlled uh, voltage source which is uh, written as beta times that of uh, V0 where V0 is being sampled onto this second port of our feedback network. Okay. So, now that you clearly you could be able to see that the resistance divider which is uh, R1 and R2 combinations are being replaced with an ideal network here. And uh, like inside this uh, op amp since because it is a voltage uh, amplifier, uh, we have to provide a voltage of Vi and that has to be passed down to a voltage controlled voltage uh, source which is A times that of Vi and since there is no R0, I am just feeding this uh, node directly to the output. Okay. Yeah. So, this is what we have as a V0 and uh, the circuit is sampling this V0 onto this. and this impedance which is nothing but or, or this V0 is basically referred with respect to a ground potential and that is what is being tapped here. Okay. So, the ground could be connected something like this. Okay. So, hope that uh, this entire thing is clear and as I stated right now, uh, I am just going to pick the entire combination and I, I forgot to uh, draw the load, the load also comes inside the uh, open loop amplifier. So, I just bring that guy inside, okay. Yeah. So, the one that I am drawing with this yellow line is right now the, the new open loop or the uh, basic amplifier. Now, as you could see that there are a lot of impedances that got into picture just because we, we have made the circuits that are outside this basic amplifier to be an ideal one. So, with that being said, I still have to prove that this input impedance right now currently is nothing but the input impedance Ri is the uh, input impedance of the basic amplifier and the RO is nothing but the uh, output impedance of the basic amplifier. Let me redraw this entire structure which I have drawn with this yellow color with, with the appropriate circuit setup. So, I have this Vi which is the input of this basic amplifier. So, if we begin with this diagram and that has been fed as an input and it has a resistance Rs and has a resistance R11, but there is an open circuit here and uh, the Vi is one something that has been passed on to the, to the input of our uh, basic amplifier. And on the other end, what we have is a load is a voltage controlled uh, voltage source with 
an impedance of R n. So, everything is included and we have a node which is taken as V naught. Okay. So, the entire uh, yellow box that has been drawn here is being redrawn with an appropriate input and output so that it will help us to visualize the value of R naught. Okay. So, the very first thing is let us try to kind of compute the value of this R i. Now, as you could see that there is a kind of series connection that exists. So, I have this uh, R s and then there is some sort of impedance that fills the gap between these two nodes and that resistance is basically infinity. Okay. So, the total value of R a is nothing but R s plus an infinity plus this value of R 1 1. So, effectively anything that you add with this infinity will also become infinity and that is the quantity that I stated earlier. Okay. So, and over the other end uh, we have to uh, find the output impedance of this basic amplifier. One could do that by uh, first killing an input source. So, which means that I have to kill this V i to the ground. So, when I do so just by shorting this node uh, what happens is that uh, this component which is a voltage controlled uh, voltage source will also has to be killed. So, the killing of this voltage source is always represented by some sort of short circuit. right? So, here you could be able to see that there is a kind of short circuit path in parallel with the load R n. So, effectively what I have is an R naught or R 0 which is having a 0 impedance in this particular path in parallel with a, with a value of R l. So, effectively uh, what we would get is something value of 0. Okay. So, all of these proofs I have stated along with uh, the loading effect on this basic amplifier. So, one of the major conclusions that one could derive out of this, uh, this entire circuit uh, is that whenever the basic amplifier is ideal, okay. uh, there is no loading effect. due to the uh, source signal and uh, the feedback circuit as well as the load. Okay. So, nothing can uh, disturb these impedances of the basic amplifier that is what I try to mean by this, uh, uh, by, by this loading effect. Okay. No loading effect means uh, whatever the non ideal uh, elements these elements are they never impact the performance of these uh, of this basic amplifier just because it never senses any of these loading effects into picture. Okay. So, that is the very first uh, thing that you need to always be clear whenever the said uh, amplifier is an ideal one you can quickly write you, you first have to quickly justify what type of amplifier it is and if it is a voltage amplifier then without any doubt you can just write it as the input impedance as infinity and the output impedance as uh, 0. Okay. So, provided the basic amplifier is an ideal one. Okay. So, this is same not only for the open loop, but it is also applies for RIF which is infinity and even for RN which is the, uh, the feedback impedance without uh, or excluding the uh, RS is again an infinity. Okay. Whereas, the ROF as well as the R out both are feedback impedances they all tend to have the value of same 0. Okay. So, without any proof we can just write down this particular statement provided you have understood what type of uh, amplifier it is from the from the way but the feedback network is connected. Okay. Yeah. So, and again uh, among these uh, we also found the factor of this beta which uh, which is nothing but uh, which is R 1 divided by R 1 plus R 2. So, that has been done. The next thing is the closed loop gain is what we still need to compute. Okay. And uh, for the closed loop gain, one can normally write it as AF, so closed loop gain for any type of amplifier it could be is always written as A which is nothing but the uh, open loop gain or the basic amplifier gain divided by 1 plus A times beta. Okay. So, so, in our case uh, we still have to identify this open loop gain factor A. Now, let us use this particular circuit that I have drawn in yellow color. This is nothing but the A circuit where you could see that the input is a voltage which is V i and the output is a, 
is a terminal which has the label as V0. Okay, so A is always defined as V0 by VI. Now, if I could able to evaluate this quantity, then everything is done, right? Yeah. So now let us try to evaluate that quantity. So, so we know that whatever the voltage that I have here, VI, just because of this open circuit, will also appear across this particular point. Okay. So I have the same VI, and and since because uh, we have a voltage controlled uh, current source here, uh, sorry, voltage controlled voltage source here, which reads in the potential difference across these nodes is being amplified by a factor of A, we have, we can write this V0, that the voltage V0 can be returned as the voltage across this voltage source as well, right. So the, the inclusion of this resistance RL never matters here, that is what I want to emphasize just because uh, any load that you connect, keep connecting, the, the drop across this, uh, these loads that I have will always stay the same and that voltage is nothing but this our V0. Okay? So here in this case, I have something like V0 being defined as gain times that of VI. So from here, one could write the same expression as capital A being written as V0 by VI. Okay? So now let us plug in those things. Since because A remains as A itself, uh, one could retain the same value and uh, whereas the beta would have a different ratio, so which is written as R1 divided by R1 plus R2. So, so it is a pretty straightforward calculation, I have just made uh, you to think in lot many different directions, so that is the reason why it took a long time for us to analyze this entire circuit. Okay? So I hope that you are clear with this, so we will just move on to the second problem. So let us consider the same amplifier configuration that is uh, given earlier. Okay. Yeah. So I, I think I, I forgot one more uh, important conclusion out of this uh, particular uh, closed loop amplifier. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, I'm just missing it up. The the only thing is that uh, let us assume that a particular case where if the loop gain, which is a times beta, is much much larger than the value of one then one could step down this expression of feedback amplifier gain as uh, A divided by A beta and that could be, which is an approximated value and that could be written as 1 upon beta. Now clearly we know that the factor of beta is R1 divided by R1 plus R2, right? So that when we substitute, we would end up having something like 1 plus uh, R2 by R1 and which is exactly the uh, gain expression of a non-inverting amplifier. Hope that you remember those uh, basic ampli uh, basic electronic subjects where you would have learnt uh, the configuration that we had here. Yeah, the configuration that we have shown here is nothing but it's a it's a kind of non-inverting amplifier, and we generally tend to use this uh, result for the feedback uh, gain. So let me move on to the second problem. Um, so in this case, I'm going to use the same feedback network that I've shown earlier. So you try to recollect those pictures, and let me just only state the problem here. Let us consider that there is an input impedance which is RID. Okay. So what I really mean here is that uh, in, in the place of infinity. Okay. So in this case, I have an input impedance. Let me use a different color. So instead of an infinite input impedance, what I have is a resistance value of RID. Okay? And I also have a non-ideal output uh, node, which is defined as R0. Let me use a small letter R0 so that it distinguishes from the uh, total open loop output impedance calculation. Okay? So, so these are the two impedances that I am trying to add for the second problem. And let us do this problem and see how does it impacts the RIF, uh, RN as well as ROF and R out. You know? 
So considering those things, let me complete the uh, problem statement, which is written as 100 kilo ohm and the R naught is taken as 1 kilo ohm and uh, the load resistance is taken as 2k and R1 is 1 kilo ohm and the value of R2 is 1 mega ohm and the source impedance RS is taken as 10 kilo ohm and the factor A. So, in this case let me uh, just change this uh, A to mu so that it never confuses with this calculation. So, I am just going to replace this A with mu factor. So, let me write it as mu that is the voltage controlled uh, component has a gain medium of 10 to the power 4. So, ensure that you are not getting confused with this letter A and this mu, they bo both are same and they will be same when we while considering the, uh, the op amp as an ideal one, but just on the other hand, uh, this will not be the same when the op amp uh, that we have used currently is not an ideal one. Okay? So, whenever we go for a non-ideal one, then the A and mu will be different okay? and due to which I introduce this term mu for this voltage controlled uh, yeah, for this voltage controlled voltage source component rather than having as letter A, okay, yeah. So, uh, if you, okay, let, let me just quickly draw the circuit and then uh, try to get the results as well as possible. And I have this op amp and let me draw the internal structure that I have here and along with this, uh, I have a voltage source that has been applied as an input with a source resistance RS and uh, plus and minus and currently the input impedance of this original op amp is basically is no more infinity, but rather it has a resistance value of RID and if this is an RS and there is a feedback network and it is R1 and there is again a resistance that connects between the uh, negative terminal of the op amp input terminal and the output node V0 and there is also a load resistance Rn. Okay. Yeah. So, which is again the same amplifier, voltage amplifier, uh, which we have already discussed. The only thing is that uh, we just have to uh, uh, come up with an A circuit and then uh, the value of other quantities has to be evaluated from, from there. Okay. So, as we discussed uh, from the beta network, one could uh, quickly evaluate these values, right. So, this is my beta network or the feedback network. And from this feedback network, we need three quantities and uh, all of those three quantities are, are all been done in the, the earlier uh, session. So, the only thing is that I will just try to uh, write it as R11, which is nothing but R1 in parallel with R2. Uh, so, this is computed based on the type of connection that we have made. Uh, the connection that we have made across the output is basically a shunt. Okay. So, whenever we have a shunt, we have to uh, go for short circuit. And that is what we have done and due to which we got this particular value of R11. And the computation of R22 uh, just be, is done by looking for the type of connection that we have across the port number 1 and in that case we have a series connection and whenever we have a series connection, uh, we generally have to go for an open circuit path and when we have this open circuit path that the value of this R22 is nothing but R1 plus R2. Okay. Now, there is one more factor that we need to find is the factor of beta and uh, which is again a voltage division rule just because uh, of this relation of Vf is nothing but the drop across the resistance R1 and V0 has been sampled as an input voltage to the feedback network. So, one can use this simple relation between V0 and Vf which is a basic uh, feedback a basic voltage divider rule which says that it is supposed to be equal to this quantity. Okay. Yeah. So, now that we have got all these three quantities based on the uh, feedback network. So, now the next thing that we have to go for it is the computation of the A circuit or the uh, basic amplifier circuits gain input and output impedances. Okay. So, let me write it as basic amplifier or in short A circuit. Okay. Yeah. So, based on all of these quantities, let me redraw the structure of this. Uh, a circuit and we know that for the A circuit or the basic amplifier will have an input voltage which is not Vs, which is a Vi. So, that is the voltage that I have and 
we have pushed all the non ideal characteristics from the source on on to the input side of the uh, basic amplifier and already the basic amplifier also has an input resistance which is rid and uh, we also have to take the loading effect of our feedback network onto the input side uh, which is written as r1 in parallel with r2 okay and that is the quantity that i have modeled as a resistance over here and on the other end we have a voltage controlled voltage source and uh, that has mu times that of v a particular value now what is this particular value can i write it as mu times that of vi the answer to this question is not exactly the same so in this case we have to take we always have to read in the drop across these nodes okay and if i label this drop across this uh, resistor rid as vid then the voltage controlled uh, voltage source will be a product of mu times that of vid okay it is no more equal to vi so th that is something that we need to always concern and that's the reason why while i was translating over there uh, i was telling that we have to look for these nodes and if this node has a specific value of voltage and that is what is been multiplied over here now whenever the value of this rid is taken as uh, infinity in that case uh, we will have this vi to be exactly equal to vid so so in that case one could substitute the value of vid as vi and then do the calculation but in this case where the the input impedance rid is no more equal to infinity uh, there will be a voltage drop across this resistance and we measure that voltage drop across this resistance rid as vid and then we use that for the uh, voltage controlled uh, voltage source and followed by this we also have a resistance r not and uh, we have the loading effect coming out of the feedback network which is r22 and we know that the value of r22 is basically r1 plus r2 and the loading effect from the load which is rn and here is where we tap the output as v0 so from this circuit i just need to calculate the gain of the circuit which i write it as a and it is defined as v0 by vi now this v0 by vi term can be returned by making use of a chain rule as vi into vid and v0 divided by vid so that uh, i have the common terms of vid on both the sides so now the way to compute the value of vid with respect to this input vi is again is based on the very simple uh, voltage division rule which i write it as drop across the resistance rid is nothing but my vid divided by the summation of all the resistances which is rs uh, rid plus the r1 in parallel with r2 impedance okay and that is the one that provides me this quantity of okay this is an exact map from vi d by vi ratio to this particular factor and next for vid with respect to v0 uh, one could clearly see that uh, there's a kind of uh, gain from here to here so again one could use the same uh, voltage division rule so so here in this case one could combine these two resistances as a single resistance so let me write it as r1 plus r2 in parallel with r and there is a voltage over here and what we wanted is to read a voltage across this particular node which uh, which is taken as uh, v0 so again a simple voltage division rule will give get us this particular value so the end value of it i am just writing it here as rl which is nothing but the v0 value or the drop across this uh, these resistances divided by this rl in parallel with r1 plus r2 plus the impedance value of r0 okay so so now that when you plug in all the values that i have stated here at the like using all these five values on to these parameters one would end up having a gain of a that is closer to a value of uh, 6000 volt per volt and the next thing is the factor of beta has to be computed which we know it is defined as vf by v0 and uh, the factor remains as r1 divided by r1 plus r2 so again when somebody tries to compute you would end up having a milli volt per volt okay so now let us quickly uh, compute the 
other factors. Uh, the closed loop gain or the feedback amplifier gain, which I write as AF, and that could be written as V naught for an input voltage source of Vs. Okay, so this is the gain not of this circuit, okay, but rather the gain of this circuit along with the feedback. Okay, so you have to use consider this particular circuit. So if you want, I can redraw this structure. So we basically have uh, a Vs, and it has an input impedance which we still have to compute that, which is uh, RIF. And uh, I think it would be better if I could be able to draw something like this. Okay, yeah. And uh, we have AF sitting here, okay, uh, which is sensing the voltage source Vs. And we have an output impedance which is yet to be computed, which is ROF. And the output node will have potential of V naught. Okay. So, this is an equivalent circuit representation of a voltage uh, amplifier with the feedback. Okay. Yeah. Now, out of the circuit, uh, AF can be brought down based on the uh, circuit that has been drawn earlier, that is the amplifier with the residue feedback network. So, which is written as A divided by 1 plus A beta. So, the expression remains the same. And we have we have already computed the value of A as well as the feedback factor beta. So it would be like 6000 at the top divided by 1 plus. So this quantity will be equal to 7. So we should end up having 857 volt per volt. Okay. Now let us try to compute these impedances values of RIF and ROF. Okay. Now since because this uh, feedback network that we have makes uh, uh, what type of connection? Yeah, makes a serious connection at the input. Okay, so this is my input impedance of the feedback amplifier. Okay, yeah. So this RIF, since because it makes a kind of uh, serious connection at the input, we know that the that the uh, value of RI, which is the open loop or the basic amplifier input impedance will be magnified by this quantity of 1 plus A beta. So now we, we know that the value of this Ri which, uh, which is already written at the top which is the summation of all these three quantities was ending up having a value that is approximately closer to 111 kilo ohms and uh, this entire thing has to be multiplied by a factor of 7 uh, which is the factor that comes out of this uh, 1 plus A beta term. So due to which one would end up having uh, 777 kilo ohm. Okay. Now whereas with the output impedance of the feedback amplifier, okay, so that could be uh, written as ROF and that is nothing but R naught divided by 1 plus A beta. Now we already stated that the output impedance is nothing but it is R naught in parallel with R1 plus R2 in parallel with Rn. Okay. So, so when we put all these numbers together, we would end up having a value which is equal to 667 ohms and uh, that when it gets divided by a factor of 7, one would end up having 95.3 ohms. Okay. So these are the, uh, the input and output impedance of the feedback network, but the actual impedances values have to exclude those source impedances and the load impedances out of the circuit. right? So let me write it as the actual impedances of the feedback amplifier. And we will begin with this input impedance which is Rn. And we know that this Rn is basically take, taken from the RIF by subtracting the resistance value of Rs. So due to which uh, one would end up having uh, a value which is equal to 739 kilo ohm. Okay. And similarly, the actual value of output impedance 
is calculated by uh, a simple mathematical uh, quantity which is 1 divided by 1 upon R O F. Since because every, all of these 3 impedances are in parallel, I want to exclude only the R L resistance out of this. Uh, the formula by which I can do that is by making use of the simple uh, relation. Okay. Algebraically, you can prove this. And when we do so, we will end up having a value of an output impedance which is equal to 100 ohms. Okay. So, the next will uh, we have to still it to do a few more problems. Um, So here in this case for the circuit shown in figure which is supposed to be at the bottom, uh, it is required to analyze amplifier to obtain its voltage gain which is V0 by Vs. So, in this case what we supposed to identify is the feedback amplifiers gain and uh, the input resistance again the feedback amplifiers input impedance actual uh, impedance and the feedback amplifier output resistance I uh, will just write it as R out. So, so, we need to find the numerical values for these uh, above set quantities. Okay. So, we have to evaluate 3 things here okay. and in order to evaluate those values, uh, the corresponding values of these, uh, the other components are being given. So, here we have this GM1 and GM2 to be equal to 4 milli ampere per volt because it is a, a conductance and uh, the value of RD1 and uh, the value of RD2 is basically 10 kilo ohm and the value of R1 is equal to 1 K and uh, R2 is basically 9 K and uh, for simplicity let us neglect the R naught factor out of the circuit. Okay. Yeah. So, let me draw the circuit so that uh, you will end up having a visual of it. So, I have a Vs and then uh, there is a load for the value of R1 and R2. And we have this RD1. Q2. And then there is a load of RD1. Okay. We are sampling this voltage. Yeah. So, uh, probably uh, I, I in this case, uh, the transistors that we have here, we know that these transistors will is not a kind of voltage controlled voltage source as like amplifier that we have discussed uh, earlier. Okay. So, let me write this as a kind of statement. Uh, the one thing that you need to observe is that these transistors Q1 as well as this Q2 are not a voltage controlled uh, voltage source, but we know that there is a drain current, small signal drain current and this drain current uh, depends on uh, Gm times that of the input voltage Vgs. So, which is nothing but it is a it is a kind of voltage controlled current source okay, and uh, not to be taken as voltage controlled voltage source as we had discussed in the previous problem okay, where we had uh, taken this factor as mu times that of V i. So, in this case it is not that okay, whatever the voltage that we are getting out of the circuit was taken as a voltage as V naught whereas, the transistors Q 1 and Q 2 will take in an input voltage of VGS that when it gets multiplied with transconductance, it returns as the current. Okay. So, one has to work with this. 
So I'll just provide you this as an assignment today, and uh, we will discuss about this problem later on in the in the next class. So still, there are a few more problems to be solved for this voltage amplifier, and uh, let me just put them in the next class. Okay. Thank you.